Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Contact at Once webinar, Consumer Reactions to Digital Retailing, How to Make It Work for You. We are using ClickMeeting as a platform today, and if you have any questions, feel free to use that chat box on the left-hand side of the screen and we will respond towards the end of the presentation. My name is Aaron Evans and I am the Digital Marketing Coordinator for Driving Sales, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Our speakers today are Denise Chuddy and Therese Allman. As General Manager of Contact at Once, Denise is responsible for global sales, marketing, and operations of the automotive industry's leading messaging platform for conversational commerce and automotive tango. Therese has extensive experience developing and executing marketing and communication strategies for technology companies, including the launching of multiple early stage software companies and fast growing SaaS solution providers. So I'll now turn the time over to Denise and Therese. Hello everyone. So this is Denise Chuddy speaking. Thank you for joining us. Today what we wanted to share is our viewpoint on uh, what we call conversational commerce. And um, you know, many of us on the phone and Therese and I in the room here, we've been in this industry for a long time and we've seen a lot of evolutions and it's our point of view as a business that the next major shift in the way people utilize digital is in uh, what we call conversational commerce. We are part of the live person company. If you um, are familiar with live person, they power messaging for big brands like T-Mobile, Discover, their global company, and we are their automotive division. And the, We wanted to kickstart this presentation with, in the beginning, I want to review just a little bit of the highlights again of, of what we, how we look at conversational co commerce, the transition we see car shoppers and consumers at large making. Then we want to share with you a study that we did in conjunction with Kevin Root that digs a little bit deeper into what are people's expectations when they shop online, particularly as it pertains to all of these digital retailing tools that we are offering. What kind of help do they want and need? And then we have at the very end some recommendations for all of you. So let me get started by first here. You, you, hopefully you've read this quote by now since it's been up on the screen for a little bit. But you know, really what we wanted to get to, and this it starts from the, the heart of our founder who um, has been in this space for uh, multiple decades, started the company 25 years ago, did I get that right, 25, 25 plus. 20 plus years ago. And uh, you know, his observation and insights is that you know, we've built the digital industry in a way that we've taken huge amounts of data and we've, we've put the burden on the shopper or the reader to sift and store and navigate and try to find and figure out how to get to that piece of information they want. But the reality is, is when we shop though, it, we really do shop and buy in a dynamic nonlinear way. So we are seeing this big shift in AI and technology really enabling us to advance the way all of us as digital marketers can communicate with people. So how that pertains then to big brands, what you are looking at on this screen is we wanted to show an example of how a phone carrier, for example, works in the conversational space. And this is, you know, when we talk about conversational commerce, we talk about things like messaging in a messaging frame like this. We talk about text, chat, um, ways that people are asking questions that are, again, um, conversational in tone. And what you can see on the right-hand side is this example of a phone carrier asking you know, if somebody wants to have a conversation, the agent is immediately able to de detect that this is a current customer and knows immediately that this person is in market for a new phone and can give a pick list of these phones and let somebody select the product and actually buy within the conversation. Not having to go to the website, not having to make a phone call, but just again, really making it easy in a conversational setting to make a purchase. And while nobody is shopping for cars this way yet, we do know that there are a lot of um, indications that people are leaning in, and that's what our research will show. People are leaning in during the car buying as well as the car ownership process and wanting to get more of their questions answered in this conversational manner. I had, sure, so I had um, uh, earlier um, 
talk about a little bit about the way we look at it in automotive. And what you're looking at on this screen is our viewpoint of how conversations will quickly eclipse the web. This is our back end tool set for agents. So that could be somebody um, looking at a BBC at your dealership. It could be one of our live guides here at Contact at Once that, that answers on behalf of our customers. Or it could be you know, a salesperson that a dealership on Saturday morning joined a Saturday sales meeting and they empower each salesperson to handle every message-based conversation that comes in. And again, when we talk about messaging, it's you know, the full gamut of Facebook messaging, chat, text, um, and, and messaging on your site. Um, with the, I want to stay a minute on this slide, though, uh, to, to give you a framework for what, what we're looking at and how we see conversational commerce eclipsing the web. So on the left-hand side here, as a dealership, you have many sources of conversations, right? It could be your OEM website, your own website, a third-party website like autotradercars.com, Facebook, Google My Business. You know, we, what we do here at Contact at Once is we power conversations on all of those platforms so that you can, as a business, manage your conversation flow and help car shoppers buy in a manner that's easy for them where they ask questions and you pipe in information. That second screen you're looking at there, the Ethan Dal Dalton, you can see that's the conversation screen where we're piping in uh, robust inventory views, VDP views, Carfax data, videos, a lot of information that you're able to pipe in, saving the car shopper the time, energy, and effort of having to go sort and sift and find that information on their own on your website. Um, so a lot of, again, the technology that's being powered today is really going to help you have a more fruitful engagement and conversation that's based on a message. And two more things about this screen before we move on. In the middle there, there's also that ability, right? We always want to make sure we know who we're talking to and, and capture leads so that we can follow up with them on the, the cars that they've purchased. And then certainly inventory integration. Again, we wanted to show this to you as our vision for how automotive will start to play in that conversational commerce game and take those components of your website, dissect them, and at the moment when the question is asked, be able to serve them up to a shopper or an owner who is looking to you for answers. So before we're going to get to the root study next, but before we do, I wanted to frame this up of, you know, it really is about when we think about conversational commerce and digital retailing, it really simply is about all of us just helping people buy when and how they want. Um, and, you know, we all in the industry talk a lot about digital retailing tools that are out there. How do we think dealers will adapt them? Uh, you know, some folks are saying that they think the concepts overplay. However, you feel about digital retailing or the tools you've chosen, the consumer is, is clearly stating their need, and their need is they want more help online. They are willing to fill out more forms. They are willing to give more information. They're willing to lean in and want to do more on their time and their their format of choice. Um, however, here's the good news for all of us in this industry, they also still want to have a relationship with a local retailer. So um, again, no matter how you feel about digital retailing, I'm hoping through the next research section you can keep an open mind and think about that you know, the, the common denominator and all the things that all of us say in this industry is that people simply want more help from us and we believe that uh, a platform like Contact at Once and Conversational Commerce is a natural way to do that. So I'm going to pass now the controls over to Therese. Therese, can you tell the audience a little bit about the root study that we conducted? I will. Um, so a lot of you may know Kevin Root. Um, we went to him a few months back and said, hey Kevin, we're hearing a lot about digital retailing and about the way that consumers um, want to shop and, and whether consumers will fill out forms online and, and how does this work. Um, and we would like to understand how consumers feel about filling out forms online, about doing some or, or, or almost all 
of the purchase process online. And let me step back and say, we at Contact at Once have, have always believed and continue to believe, especially validated now through this research, that consumers still want relationships. They want relationships with the manufacturer and the dealer all through this process. It's just a matter of how they engage and what are the, the tools and devices that they can use to engage. I know when I bought my first car, it was back in the day when you went to the dealership and you, you know, we, 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 my, my dad knew the guy because he had bought cars from him for years and so it was very relational. Now I think consumers still want relationships, but they want it in a different way in the format and the way that we communicate now, which is usually digitally with chat and text. So anyway, we went to Kevin and said, help us figure out how um, what we do fits into digital retailing to provide a better consumer experience so that our, our customers and consumers can more enjoy the shopping process. And so we got some interesting results, things that I think that all of you will be interested in too. Um, more than eight in 10 of the, so we, so we divided the study into two groups. Um, one group being the people who uh, intend to buy a car in the next six months, those who ha and those who had purchased, because we wanted to get an idea from both of them of how they acted during the purchase process and what their, their thoughts and feelings were. Um, we also did qualitative and quantitative research, which I'll show in a couple of minutes. Um, but that, that helped us not only um, do focus groups and interviews with people to get really deep into what consumers were thinking, but it also um, the quant quantitative research to over a thousand consumers helped us validate what we were hearing when we did the focus groups. Um, so just the way that Kevin does his studies and, and good marketing, by the way. Um, so more than 8 in 10 of those people who said that they are going to buy a car said that they would complete at least some of the digital retailing process online and the purchase process online. Some of them, and this goes to show, we're all different and, and we need to meet consumers where they are. Some said they're fine to do pre-qual and, and trade valuations, but they pause at doing um, uh, credit applications and anything where they're having to share personal information online. And some of them, and some of you will be happy to hear this, I know, um, and probably laugh a little bit, they said they still love the face-to-face -face at the dealership because it feels like it gives them an opportunity to negotiate and be the negotiator and bargain. Um, so they, they were all across the board in the ways that they perceived digital retailing, but one thing that came through clearly was they all still want the relationship with the dealer face-to-face -face, um, at some point at the, toward the end of the buying cycle. We asked specifically because we were looking at piloting a product here within Contact at Once uh, where we could provide a higher level of nurturing and support to our customers customers. So we said if we were to put together a team that was able to learn the products and was able to nurture buyers along the buying cycle, um, would that A, help our dealerships because it, the dealership would be able to be more efficient and B, would consumers enjoy it because they could actually establish a relationship with someone, talk with them, uh, ask questions and not feel like that they were getting, uh, you know, pressured too early in the cycle to buy. Um, so we ask consumers, if we were to give you this resource, a guided shopper or what we, what, what we call live advisor, if we were to give you those, research, uh, those resources, what could they help you do? And these are some of the things that they told us. Um, and it's interesting because this information dovetails with a lot of other studies that we're seeing out there. Um, I've seen one from True Car and Chip Perry, um, Auto Trader and Cox Automotive have put out studies. And people, consumers consistently say that these are some of the key things that they're looking for in the areas where they would like to have help. Um, as I said earlier, I had a little bit the high points on the study just so that you all know um, and the accuracy to was, is to within, sorry, a 3.1 percentage interval uh, with a 95% confidence level. So again, we, we followed the rules of doing a, um, a marketing study in the correct way to, to be able to feel good about the results that we're putting in front of you today. 
we set out to measure the perceptions of guided shopping, and we also wanted to identify what consumers' preferred modes of communication are. So we wanted to know, do consume, are consumers comfortable with texting with a dealership? If they are, where in the, the buying cycle are they comfortable with that? Um, do they like chat? When do they use chat? Um, do they want to call? And if they do want to call, when will they call in the buying process? And how do we handle those phone calls and how do consumers feel about uh, phone calls with dealerships? So we ask them a lot of different questions, not just particularly related to our product, but also about what their perceptions and their feelings are about these buying cycles with dealerships. We learned that consumers in both of the studies, both the quantitative and the qualitative, expressed similar concerns. Again, um, our study was actually done prior to a couple of the ones that I've, that I've seen from True Car and Cox Automotive Sense, and they almost completely align with what consumers talk about time and time again as their frustrations. I, don't, I can't find consistent information. The information is fragmented. Um, I do want to engage in digital retailing tasks, but I'm not sure how to complete forms, or I get lost in the process, or people shop the same way we do. I mean, sometimes I think that we forget that consumers are just like us when it comes to, to shopping. You know, we, we shop and we do, we do everything, basically, at this point, in snatches of time that we have when we're well, no longer in Georgia. We can't do it when we're sitting at a red light. There's a law against that now. But you know, when we're on the train, when we're watching TV at night with the family, and we're, we're doing it in five, 10, 20 minute increments. So um, the, the consumers say, you know, I need to be able to get to information quickly and I need for it to be consistent across platforms. Um, they did tell us that they prefer chat over phone calls or texting with dealerships. However, interestingly, they told us that they love having a text in response to a missed phone call. We also tested that process to say, okay, if, and we all know that when phone calls come into dealerships, sometimes they don't get handled well, um, or they wind up someplace where the consumer didn't intend to be. So we tested a process where we could um, send an outbound text in response to a phone call that didn't land where it was supposed to and ask consumers what they thought about that process and they loved it. Um, so they really liked the ability to text with a dealership when they're ready in the sales process and also as a response to missed phone calls because none of us likes to play phone text. Biggest, their biggest pain points are, again, nothing that really is a surprise to us. Again, it just validates what we all know. It helps us to say, yes, you know what? People are saying that these are pain points. So how do I structure the content on my website? How do I provide tools that help consumers get to the information that they're looking for? How do I make my assets high value to the consumers as they're going through the process and also build relationship with them. Um, one of the things that they told us over and over again, they said it's the, the, the amount of information online is just overwhelming and it, it's hard, especially when you're on a mobile device and again you're shop, shopping in snatches, it's hard to parse that information and get to what you're looking for. You know what's interesting about this to me was we all uh, talk about there's a study out there that people go to two dozen plus automotive websites when they're, they're purchase a car. And many of us in this industry have always thought, well, that's because people spend a lot of time on the path to purchase and they want to be sure. When I read through this study, and particularly this section, I thought, maybe we got it wrong. Maybe people go to so many different sites because we've made it so hard for them to find what they really need. Which is why, again, we point to conversational commerce solves that problem. You just ask the question, and you put the burden then on the agent to find that information, right? You, you, you know, for me, it's about, you know, do you have a car with vegan leather seats, right? Those are all my questions. Try finding that on a website, sorting and sifting and trying to find the car that meets your, you know, your consideration set. And now, I become that consumer where I figure the burden isn't on me, the burden is on the, the agent, the person I'm communicating with, to know enough about their products so that they can guide me in my shopping process. One of the things that as a result of this, a direct result of this study, and one of the ways that we're starting to, to use this information to help us guide product decisions is we're looking at pick lists 
so when consumers go in and, and they're ready to communicate with someone through our platform, we can offer them right away a pick list of choices so that they can, can quickly say, I'm looking to schedule a service appointment, I'm looking for pre-owned inventory, I'm looking for a new car, I want to ask questions about vegan leather seats. Um, so just helping any way that we can look, we both, um, the, the software providers and you all as the dealers and the manufacturers in the industry, if we can think in terms of how do we parse information and how do we put tools in the hands of consumers so that we make it easy for them and helpful for them. So we also asked and got some stats, as you can imagine, um, and it, 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 again, I doubt that anyone is going to jump up and say, wow, this is a, a, a revolutionary idea to me, but the number is pervasive. 88% of both the recent shoppers and the intenders said they do at least half of their shopping online now. So again, it goes back to it's just so important that we make it easy for them to find what they're looking for. Um, they also expect to complete digital retailing like forms online. Um, now they don't necessarily, everybody doesn't agree that they would be willing to go all the way to completing a credit app, um, but a lot of them are willing to complete a trade valuation and we all know that that's one of the highest quality leads that you can get. So they're very open to it, they're very positive about doing things online. Anything that shortens the time that they have to spend buying a car is perceived to be helpful to them. They said that they're more likely to use online resources if they have the aid of a live guide or a live advisor. And so really we went into this study to say, do people want to talk to someone? I mean, do they, at what point in the buying cycle do they want to talk to someone? And will they engage with someone if we give them the opportunity? And the answer was a resounding yes. Over two-thirds of them said, I am more likely to use the tools that are on the site if I am able to engage with someone who can help guide me through this process. But let's be very clear about what they mean when they say guide. It is not um, you know, asking them for their email address and their phone number in the very first part of the conversation. It's more of a nurturing conversation and they were clear about that. Help me find the information I'm looking for. Help me find the pricing information or the inventory information that I'm looking for, but don't pressure me with a immediately give me your contact information. They said that they would be more willing to fill out digital retailing forms if they had lab assistance. And the reason why this is important to you all is because when a consumer engages with digital retailing resources on your website or any kind of resource like that that is a high value, um, time intensive resource where, where a consumer is putting effort into it, they are more likely to buy and they're more likely to buy faster. Um, there are multiple studies out there that show that consumers that participate in digital retailing um, or, or complete digital retailing apps online buy on average of six days faster. So this is really important. You want them to want to complete some or all of these forms online. One of the things that from this study um, after that, that last stat uh, that we did to, to change our business was in working with our own live guys, our live agents, we coached them on how do you walk somebody through the process without doing the, you know, hey, can I get your name and number so somebody can contact you? And we use this stat to, to reinforce that rule of reciprocity, right? Somebody's leaning in and the most common question they ask is, is this car still available, right? Rather than, you know, let me check, can I have your name and number and, you know, try to get from them information right away. How do we gradually lean in, give them the information they need and, and institute that rule of reciprocity? And you saw in our tool set, we can not only say, yes, it's available, but take then the VDP and push it through the chat window or push it through a text link so they now have it in their hands, right? They've got the actual information in their hands and that's that, again, that rule of reciprocity that we've been learning and how we can handle this new empowered uh, shopper. 
And of course, we all always talk about the coveted millennials, and uh, it probably doesn't come as a surprise, but they are more likely to use digital retailing than some of the older generations. They are also more likely to want guided shopping and to uh, use guided, guided shopping. They have a strong preference for live chat. Um, they would much, almost none of them said that they would rather phone. Um, so they, they enjoy the uh, text-based communications. And like I said, virtually none of them. I, it was a very small percentage who said that they would choose the phone first. So to just summarize what we learned from uh, some of the stats here, was it goes back to those who use digital retailing um, are going to buy cars faster, and they're just having, going to have an overall better experience. So you want to provide those tools to them, but also provide the guides to help them. Um, we, we were particularly interested in text and how it stacks up. I mean, I know um, a lot of people are using text these days, but do consumers really like texting with an auto dealership? I mean, that was one of the questions that we wanted to ask. There is a favorable impression. They told us that they felt uh, highly attended to. Um, they liked the, the rapid response. They liked the fact that they are in control of the conversation. So, and they also like the fact that texting is async, uh, asynchronous messaging. So we have an entirely different, and, and we've done a lot of study the, on this at Life Person. We have an entirely different reaction to texting than we do to a phone call or a chat. Really, a chat in our minds is like a phone call. If I chat, I expect somebody to get back to me immediately. If I text, I understand that there may be latency in that conversation, and I'm okay with that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily expect an immediate response when I text, and if somebody doesn't text me back immediately, but they do get back to me in a timely fashion, I'm okay with that. Um, they also like the, like I said, they like the distance that text offers compared to the phone. It just makes them feel like they're a little more in control of the conversation. And overall, there are very favorable responses to text. Again, as I said, especially when you are following up with them um, and in relation to a missed phone call or, or cutting short a game of email tag or phone tag using text instead. Um, so we finally asked the question, you know, as we, we went through the study, we asked the question, okay, does it make a big enough difference that you would make a choice about a dealership or a manufacturer based on whether they offer guided shopping to you and this ability to be able to engage in the conversation early on in the selling cycle and be nurtured all the way through? And almost two-thirds, uh, almost 50%, said that they would choose, if all things were equal, um, they would choose a dealership who gives them an opportunity to have this guided shopping experience. Um, a little over half said that they would choose a manufacturer who gave them this experience on um, you know, everything being equal. And if there are, if we have some of our manufacturer friends out there, um, I would also point out that people who are visiting your manufacturer site are, are probably some of your more brand loyal people. So giving them an opportunity to engage with you right away and create that relationship and that stickiness with the brand is just super important. The conclusion was that almost everybody in the study that we talked to liked guided shopping. Um, they felt like that the benefits were that they got advice and it without pressure. Um, they said that they were li very likely to use the assistance of a live advisor, and they liked or even loved the idea of having help from live advisors. Uh, you can see these numbers are very strong, 86% finding it useful, 77% finding it relevant, 77% saying that they would use guided shopping and use this nurturing process if it was available to them. We um, tested our, the, the concept that we had, and so wanted to share a couple of the results of that with you. It was a pilot, so it was a test. Um, but we looked at over 1,000 conversations, and over the course of those conversations, we had a 70% interaction rate, and that was with our, um, our live advisors 
being it, following the nurturing plan, following the getting into the conversation, um, being available for the consumer, reconnecting with the consumer when they wanted to, pushing rich content to the consumer to help them along the cycle. Um, and we, had, we saw from that an increase in the digital retailing form completion, um, increase in consumer reactions. Uh, our lot advisors were able to drive test drives to the dealerships. They even assisted in the sale of cars, and we tell this story because we just think it's rem remarkable. We even had consumers emailing the lab advisors back with pictures of themselves with their new cars saying, thank you for your help. Um, so consumers really, really did like the process, and they were, and they were positive about it. So we expect to see digital retailing tools increase, of course. We think that you all would agree that some form or another, whatever you call it, that um, consumers are demanding and wanting to do more and more of this online. And so we would offer that the guided shopping process is an easy way to, um, to help consumers participate in the digital retailing process. Uh, consumers view guided shopping in a very positive light. The lab assistant stands did skew younger, um, so putting data shopping in place and putting a nurturing process in place may be a really good way to attract and retain younger shoppers, and we know that that's something that we all have to be focused on. And um, consumers shop, as we said before, not surprising, consumers shop in many places, so being able to have your presence through um, chat, text, and conversational commerce and all the places they're shopping just give you an opportunity to make that connection sooner and nurture that relationship along further. We have a few recommendations. Uh, we're at the 30 minute mark. Do we have any questions? There was a question about um, the presentation being available kind of towards the end. Just wondering if they'll be able to you know, keep the notes that they've taken and be able to reference that through the presentation. Absolutely, Afterwards. and I'm assuming that you will, um, that driving sales will make a recording available online. I think that's yes. usually done. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll happen as well, and that link will be sent out to all of all of you here today. Um, yeah, it's kind of the only questions right now. So just a few recommendations, and then we'll wrap it up. We appreciate your time today, and want to be uh, cognizant of your time. So we would suggest that you provide a guided shopping and a digital retailing assistance through a combination of technology and people. Um, you don't, there, there are uh, automation opportunities here. You don't have to staff up and hire a bunch of people in order to do this, um, but we would recommend that you do guided shopping and digital retailing assistance. Denise, do you have anything you want to add to this yeah, one? And I think one of the important things is to think through what, what are the places on your site, right? You know this, the people who help you, the dealership, understand how consumption happens on your site. Where are the places on your site where people don't, don't follow through or you get high drop off and how do you insert these tools, you know, in this particular case you're looking at a chat window, how do you insert them more strategically mm -hmm. so that you're there and recognized as a helpful aid? You know, I think this category launched as a um, interception point where you'd have a little chat window in the bottom, and it would be all shrunk until somebody needed it, and it was the you know the help button. You know, we would encourage you to move away from the thought that this is just you know for somebody to sort and sift and seek out when they need help to a reminder and an omnipresent old way of. of helping that consumer to understand that there is help and there is a person. And you'll see here, we advocate for authenticity. You know, we 100% of the time recommend and have our partners use an authentic picture of, of real people. Um, usually we just put the first name in because I know that a lot of our customers want to make sure that you know, it's the first name. But again, make sure that you think through strategically where are the places on your site. And most likely it's probably VDP, right? You probably get a lot of drop off too during that, um, the process of somebody getting their car uh, evaluated and things like that. And again, the point is make sure you're, you're there at those places you know are the most important places where people tend to leave. And if you already have digital retailing tools on your site, surely there make sure that you have messaging um, 
uh, invitations available on the places where you have digital retailing because they can, they, there, there are big questions that can come up as people go through the process. We also recommend that you look at the possibility of automating some of this through bots. Um, we won't get into a bot discussion today because that's a whole topic on its own. But just know that um, as you see more and more about automation, there was an article I just saw recently in Auto Success about uh, Bulldog Kia and some automation that they're doing. Um, it's becoming more and more prevalent and it's, in, it's, it's easy to put a bot in front of some of the human capital in order to help people sift through what they're looking for. Again, we're just trying to get consumers to the information as, um, as fast and efficiently as we can. We, of course, at Contact at Once are, are heavy advocates of creating the conversational network. Um, you, have, we have, you have connections out there. There's a network everywhere. Make sure you're in all the places that you can be and make sure that you are connecting with consumers early on in the cycle and just offering an opportunity to establish a relationship. It doesn't have to be hardcore. It just has to be where you're available and you're, you're ready and, and willing to answer questions and to nurture them along the process. And what we see is every time you add a messaging component that it doesn't take away from your phone calls or your email leads. It's just those people who aren't going to call or email have an opportunity to connect with you. You know, I think we would all agree that there's more work to be done in getting people who visit you, your website or even a third party site to raise their hand, to give us an indication of what they're thinking. Less than 10%. If you add up your email leads plus your phone calls, that's less than 10%. Some dealers tell me it's less than 5% of the people who go to their site or go to some of these marketplaces, are less than again 5% uh, are really engaging with them. So again, this is just another opportunity. Everywhere you place your inventory, everywhere where your brand is, give people another reason to reach out and have a conversation. And we won't belabor this one. Of course, though, we're going to recommend that you use a conversational management platform, not just because you need a way to create those connections, but also because it's really important that you have security and scalability. I mean, one of the things that consumers told us in the study time and time again is that they would complete more of the process online if they felt their information was secure. So um, this is, as, as we move more and more to um, a world where people are, com are completing more and more financial information and trade valuations and such online, you want to ensure that, that you have a secure and scalable system. So we have one of those. We're happy to talk to you about that. But regardless, we want to make sure that you're using a conversational management platform to uh, consistently deliver that consumer experience that you want. And then we talk about creating a continuous conversation, and I just want to go back to that async messaging point for a minute. Um, so a phone call is a phone call and it ends. A chat is a chat and it ends. A text or an in-app message through Facebook Marketplace, Google, et cetera, is a continuous conversation that can go on forever from the very beginning connection through the life of the relationship with the consumer if it is done well. Uh, that should be everyone's goal. That should be our goal, is to create that continuous conversation with the consumer all the way through and make the number one priority the consumer experience. And then we would, uh, we would recommend that you build a scalable plan for the future. I mean, there's a flywheel here. You know, you want to create more connections. When you create more connections, you're going to have more meaningful conversations. When you have more meaningful conversations, it's going to result in more conversions and thus more relationships. And you have the opportunity to, um, to, to pull in all of these pieces into a, a messaging platform so that you can control them and you can create your own flywheel. Denise, you yeah. have something to say for I that? I sure one? do. <laughs> so one of the things you know, on this uh, flywheel that stands out to me is dealers um, this year have been telling us and it's you know, in the press that it's been a, a tough year when it comes to profit, right? And you know, uh, the sales is um, you know usually thought of as the place where most of these conversations happen. But on the service side, we would highly encourage you to think through how do you use these channels 
for efficiency there and to get more people um, through your entire life cycle. So the folks that, uh, to Teresa's point, that text with you or are messaging with you, make sure you continue that and get them into your, your service scheduling. I'm reading more and more about dealers who are doing prepaid service programs, right? These are really good mechanisms for using conversational commerce to get people to stay with your brand as they own the car. And we all know that service is, you know, number one way where you can boost your profitability. So don't just think that this is a model for selling more cars. It's also for your over, your whole dealership uh, can benefit from a conversational commerce roadmap. And then we're here. We want to help our customers and our dealerships reinvent the business model so that it is set for and geared for conversational commerce. So let us know how we can help. And do we have any more questions, Mary? Yeah, we have quite a few actually coming in. Um, I'll just roll through a few of them. A great okay. presentation, by the way. And if you guys have any more questions, just keep chatting in on that box. Um, one from, uh, let's see, Amy. She's wondering if you have any suggestions for excellent mobile sites. Um, she feels like she has suffers from a lot of uh, challenges she faces with uh, dealership site providers. Do you guys have any suggestions towards that? Excellent mobile sites. Well, what we would first say is if you're finding that the site isn't addressing the, the needs of your car shoppers, immediately have that chat, a text inv invitation, be really open and welcoming. So I think what you can probably do is intercept um, some of that frustration by um, quickly intercepting that person with a chat or a text and I should say not or invitation that might be your best bet for engaging in the conversation and you might have your your uh, agent window say something like you know I'm here to help you find everything you need right so I would take full advantage of, of that opportunity we all know that changing technology isn't easy right and the providers in order for them to make full-scale changes on, on their sites. It takes, it takes time, energy, and effort, and none of us wants to wait that long. So that would be my number one recommendation. Mm -hmm. I think okay. um, adding, adding text is one way that you can, can quickly and easily um, look at potentially increasing your conversions from your mobile site. Yeah. And don't be afraid to text messages on that, that chat, you know, or text interception, right? Like, you could, you know, depending on your brand at your dealership, you could, you know, your message could be, the site isn't as easy as it, I would like it to be for you to navigate. I'm here to help you, right? You can have fun with it. You could test that, or you could be as simple, you know, you know, again. What more, can I get you to quickly today? <laughs> exactly. Overt ways of inviting people. You know, we, we are starting to encourage our customers, let's not consider this a lean back. Hey, you know, I'm here in the corner if you need me. Click on me when you need me. Let's be more proactive in guiding people. Again, all this data shows people want to be guided. They want the help. Let's be more overt. Let's get up in front of the, the car shopper or owner and, and, and offer that proactively. Okay, and there's a, there's a few more coming in. Um, one is wondering about training guides, if you have any guides to offer to sales teams or BDC who will be responding to potential leads. We sure do. So we had a 60 millionth message two weeks ago. So we have learned a lot over the last 15 years in this industry. So we have some of that content on our site. I don't know if um, we also have a, a training lead here. If, if that person's comfortable, we can directly connect that person to um, our, our, our trainer here. Um, certainly, process is equally as important as the tool. If, if you want to text us, whoever asked that question, if you want to text us or if you just want to, e if you want to email marketing at contactatonce.com, if that's easier for you. Um, we have a lot of best practices materials, um, but we can also do something specific or work with you specifically if you're looking for training that's geared to um, a specific brand or how you would do nurturing um, messaging versus a typical chat or text 
type of conversation. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I should mention some of our customers. We have two camps of customers. Some love this nurturing, this assistance, and then we have another camp that's all about hardcore get me the you know the right. lead. So we do have a curriculum for both. Okay, and there's a couple questions coming in about bot automation. Um, how do you guys recommend that people properly leverage um, bot automation as a whole? It is our belief that bots should be task oriented first and foremost. So one of the statements we would make about that is, is if you're talking to companies about AI development and thinking about bots, think about what are the problems you want to solve and what are the, the goals you want to achieve. That will lead you in clarity into why you would want a bot. You don't need a bot to do everything, for example. I think um, it's our perspective is that you know, it's a bot in a box, and you open it up, and it answers all the questions you need until somebody's needed, and then the person is signaled. We think that that's a fallacy. You know, we've in this industry again, we have the benefit of working with the Home Depots of the world, the Lowe's of the world, and we um, T-Mobile. We get the experience that they've deployed in, in, with our teams in understanding at what point is technology a benefit to again gain clarity, help the consumer faster and better, and when is when is it a point for you to have a human being? And time and time again comes down to think specifically about the challenge you're looking to overcome and the, the goal you're looking to achieve, and then think about how you introduce a bot in that capacity. For example, you might have an after-hours bot. You might say, you know, human capital is expensive, it's personnel at my dealership is expensive, hiring people to answer after-hours is expensive. You might look at that as your number one opportunity for a bot. After hours, I know these are the questions, and one of the things we do, or you can do on your own, um, we look at the dialogues. We look at all of the conversations that happen, for example, after hours. We know what people want to know about. We know what they're thinking because, again, we've had 60 million messages. So that might be, again, an example of a, of a bot that somebody wants. Other dealers like the thought of a greeting bot. So. If you are active in this space, you probably realize that a lot of people start a message in a conversation, but then once you respond, they don't respond back. So we get, we get a drop off immediately of about 20% of the conversations that get started don't result in an engagement back and forth. So you might say, I want a welcome bot so that I can, I can quickly sift through and the 20% that aren't going to answer, I don't need my team on point to try to get that person to answer. Instead, when I get the conversation moving, I then move that conversation to my live agent. And I would add something quickly here. And, and we are more than happy to do. Um, we're, we're more than happy to do an, a, a, an entire webinar on AI bots if you all think that that would be good. So if you um, let Aaron know that, I can't see the the, the comments right now, but let him know that, and, and we're happy to do that. Um, but I would say the other caution is don't create a bot just for the sake of having a bot. You know, just because they're a big deal right now doesn't mean that you necessarily need one. Um, they need to be, as Denise said, oriented toward tasks and treat bots just like you treat human agents. Um, but the way that our live person contact at once philosophy is a bot is an agent and it should be trained the same way, it should be treated the same way, and it should be measured the same way. And bots should be set up to fail gracefully to a human being. The last thing in the world you want is to spend the kind of money that you spend on some of these bots and then have it fail and the consumer have a bad experience. Okay, uh, that's a lot of great info. Um, and there's been so many great questions. I think that's probably about where we're going to wrap it up though. And there was another inquiry about getting the slides. And yes, I'll be sending out a link at the end of uh, probably tomorrow. I'll be able to send a link to the video and um, the slides as well if you'd like to follow up with the presentation. And so that kind of wraps up the session today. We appreciate everyone's attendance and participation. Is there anything else that you two would like to add before we wrap things up today? Um, one thing that I would add, Erin, if there are questions that we didn't get answered, if you uh, want to send those to us, we'll be happy to do an FAQ after the webinar and send it out to, um, to the attendees. Absolutely. Yeah.
All right. Well, thank you guys everyone again for attending and hope everyone has a great day. We'll attend future webinars with contact at once and driving sales. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.